At various stages in a person's career, um, there comes a time when professionally you need to uh, develop and move on just purely for the sake of personal challenge. It can be quite difficult in engineering to jump from one stream to another. It needs to be a thoughtful progression, it needs to be a planned progression, and you need to have a clear idea of where you're going. Um, simply because it does take a while to make that jump from one level to another. I I'll give you an example. I had an engineer who had worked for a particular company who specialised in um, machining and developing um, steel wheels for railway applications. He was a graduate and within four years I was unable to place his resume with other people because he was the train wheel guy. Um, people tend to want some sort of association with what their sort of brand of engineering is. So you need to be diversifying and keeping your experience as broad as possible um, right from the time you're a graduate and to stay with one company and only stay in the one particular specialisation or very narrow focus can in the long term be detrimental if you want to diversify and go into other streams. I don't think there's any one particular way which you could say is the best way to change streams. I think the key element is that you're developing your skills, you're developing your contacts, your network and you're upskilling yourself as you go but don't underestimate the soft skill of the networks and the people that you are associating with. Um, I guess one really easy and obvious way that people do tend to diversify and develop their career is to go to a remote location. A great example is a maritime engineer. If you're 200 miles out at sea and it breaks, it doesn't matter what your discipline is, you fix it. And when you've got those skills and you can demonstrate those skills from that sort of application, um, in my experience, people do tend to um, respect that sort of experience a lot. There's a couple of fundamental um, things there with that. At various stages throughout a person's lifetime career, I think that uh, the remuneration will be far more important and far more relevant than at other times. If you've got a very big mortgage and um, small kids and uh, a family who you're solely responsible for, clearly your remuneration is really important. But I think as you get on top of those things in, in, in your lifetime, they tend to be less of a motivator and fundamentally, by definition, money is not a motivator. If you solely do your engineering motivated only by money, I think I've got to ask why are you an engineer? Why are you an engineer? Why is anyone what they are if you're solely motivated by money? Um, the challenge of the role and the challenge of, your, of the position that you're in and where you're professionally up to is usually far more important to people to make the job satisfying. Getting paid is always uh, important, it's always a, a, a consideration, but I think it can Clearly you're not going to make the same amount of money instantly unless you have a clear set of transferable skills. Um, if you move from one manufacturing um, application to another and your transferable skills are based in the um, computer applications and the software you use. You've, you've got CATIA and you know, um, you know how to use uh, a particular type of FEA software and you're very good at it and the next employer works in a very, very different strand but still with a design thread, um, you're more likely to maintain your um, your financial basis and have a good basis to negotiate a solid starting package. If you're jumping from one complete stream to another, you're very much on the back foot. You need to be able to justify your skill set um, by demonstrating your ability to complete projects, whatever they may be, on time, on budget, and to generate the revenue that the company requires and needs, and solve the problems along the way.
that's a that's a whole interesting um, that's a whole interesting special uh, topic within what we're talking about. Um, I can tell you now that various sectors of manufacturing don't like ex auto <laughs> engineers because they tend to be so narrowly focused. Like uh, I have spoken to people who have spent the last four years designing the boot lid and the lock for. Um, in the broader engineering community, be it manufacturing, be it um, electrical supply, be it water, be it whatever, a really broad base of your engineering skills across design, project management, um, and the soft skills, talking to customers, ascertaining what their, um, their specifications for their, prob their particular project, their particular problem is, is really important. Someone who has had such a narrow focus to design a boot lid lock for the latest model car tends not to adapt well to those situations and I do know industries where they're not welcome. On the other hand, I know that there are a lot of design engineers who covet getting into the, um, the auto industry because it, it's seen as the pinnacle of, um, of design. Um, it's, it's just one of those tricky things about preconceived ideas that you can develop in your engineering about where people come from and how adaptable and how applicable they are to, to your um, particular branch of engineering. The critical element is not to automatically dismiss someone but to really critically tease out what their transferable skills are, what their attitude is, and this is where a good recruitment consultant can help you um, define what it is you're looking for and what it is that you have to have for the role. And that's certainly where you'd use a psych profile if you were, say, from the auto industry going to the rail industry and you had some concerns that the person wasn't going to adapt um, interpersonally, uh, professionally on any level in any way. You'd use those sorts of um, elements to make certain that that was going to happen. For you as a person it's one of those things you've got your head up and you need to find out as much about the industry you're going into and make those connections yourself and be able to articulate uh, the differences and the, the challenge and the excitement that you feel about taking on those challenges in order to make that transition. If you can articulate that and tell someone about that, it's going to make their um, any fears or preconceived ideas disappear instantly.